What's up guys, it's Josh from Cupid Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how to set up a LAMP stack on Ubuntu 20.04. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to show you guys how to set up a LAMP stack in Ubuntu 20.04. And basically what this is, it's Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And this is the typical stack that you set up. It's a, basically a group of applications that you install on your server to allow you to run a web server. And this is a very simple process. And I wanna go down and walk you guys through this whole process. I've actually done a video on this about two years ago, but I wanted to do a quick update so it will tie to the latest and greatest version of Ubuntu, which is 20.04. So let's hop over to my server and we can get started with the install. Okay, and so before we get started, uh, I just wanted to let you know I have a Ubuntu 20.04 server installed, and this is installed on my virtual server, my hypervisor in the other room. But you can easily do this on any cloud software that's out there. So you can spin up a node, install the latest version of Ubuntu, and then follow this process to set up your own cloud web server. And this process is super simple. It's only installing three different applications onto your Ubuntu server once you have it up and running. That's why I skipped that step in the LAMP stack, which is Linux. You just basically install in Linux and then go through each step, uh, Apache, MySQL, and then PHP. And then you're done at that point. All you have to do is start creating your websites from that point. Now let's get to the first step, which is installing Apache. And right now I'm SSH'd into this server, like I stated, and all we have to do is update the system first. So let's start off by doing that. So we have to type sudo apt updates. And then what I always do is put both of the commands together by using ampersand ampersand. Basically what happens when you run ampersand ampersand, the first command will run. And if it runs successfully, it will run the second command. So let's run a uh, sudo apt upgrade and then what i always do is type uh dash y uh and that basically says y to any updates that need to be installed on the system because when you run sudo apt update and then run sudo app upgrade whatever updates that it does to the system it has you verify that you want those updates to be installed on the system which I will, you know, if there are any, which I doubt it because I think this is a brand new server, but let's run it anyway and press enter and type in our pseudo password. Boom. You'll go through and uh, refresh the repositories. And as you can see, it doesn't have any upgrades. So all the packages are up to date on the server. Now let's go down and clear and go through the install of Apache. And that's something you want to do every single time you install anything new onto the server. You want to make sure the server is fully up to date. Now let's uh, type sudo apps install. And then the package name is Apache 2. So let's install that, press enter, uh, and then press Y for yes, I do want to install this application. It's going to install all these packages just to show you guys uh, break it all down for you. It says suggested packages. The following new packages will be installed. These are basically all the packages that will be installed. It says 11 newly installed. So let's press enter and then we can go through this, you know, process. It shouldn't take too long to install these packages. It's running on a pretty fast server. So the install, you know, should only take a, you know, a little while. And as you can see, it's like 93% done. So let's wait, let's wait. And it'll enable everything for you uh, and also activate the server for you. And then since we have it installed, we can now check to make sure the application is installed, you know, and the status of it and if it's actually running. Because as you can see right here, it already creates the service. And when you basically create a service, it basically creates a symbolic link pointing to the actual service. And then it enables the service as well. So let's go on and um, check to make sure that it's actually running on here. So let's go sudo system 
ctl and then what you want to type in is status and then let's type apache and i'm gonna tab it out it should be apache 2.service press enter that's the service as you can see it's active and running uh that's the loaded location and it's also enabled so right here where it says uh, vendor preset enabled, that basically lets you know that it's enabled. So anytime you restart the server, Apache will start on boot. So as soon as the system comes up, Apache will be running on the server. Now let's go down here, Q, just to get back to the terminal. And I'm going to uh, clear the screen right fast. But let me switch over to my browser right fast so I can show you guys that the actual server is working. And then I want to run a IPA that way I can get the IP address of this server because I don't know what it is, but I just wanted to show you guys how to get it. If you don't know how to get it, you know what I'm saying? So this is the IP address for the server 192.168.10.146. And so I'm going to open that up in my browser. Just give me one second. I'm going to pull that up. Okay, cool. So I'm at the browser right fast and let's uh paste in the ip address and go to it and as you can see it will bring up this apache ubuntu default page so that basically lets you know that the server is up and running and you're basically serving websites now and then it also gives you some details about it you know the readme uh this is the location where all the files would need to be stored that you're trying to serve out to the web and this is almost like a confirmation that everything is set up on the server as far as apache goes now that's the first port of the lamp stack which is apache now this next port we need to install mysql so let's go down and go back to the terminal and go through the installation for that okay cool so we're back at the terminal now let's install i'm gonna clear right fast but let's go through the install of mysql and it's very simple to install. You, you just basically type uh, sudo apps install and then MySQL. And I'm gonna tab it out dash server. And I'm gonna tab it out. I don't know why it's, oh, I see why I did. I mistyped up here. So MySQL dash S and I'm gonna just tab it out and it'll, it'll show you basically all the different versions of MySQL server that you have as well as source. But what you want to install is MySQL server right here. You know what I'm saying? That's the name of what you want to install. So I'm gonna just type that out and then press enter and we should go through this install. And it's not gonna ask me for my pseudo password because there's a timeout period between typing your pseudo password. And if you typed it in within like five minutes or so, you know, for a previous command and you don't have to type it in again if you're new to Linux. I'm only saying that for new people that are just playing around with Linux and just learning how to actually use it. Now, I'm going to kind of skip past this part because MySQL takes a little while to come up. All right. So we're done with the install of MySQL. And the way you check it is basically the same way we check the Apache. You can basically check the status of the service. Uh, so we can type sudo uh, system ctl status and then my sql i'm gonna just tab it out my sql dot service press enter boom as you can see it's active and running and then this it's enabled as you can see right there so it's enabled so anytime you restart the server you know it'll pop up with my sql you know already started and i've done printing it plenty of videos you can uh just look back through my my catalog of videos and I've done videos showing you guys how to set up MySQL if you're trying to set up a website you know just basically going through the whole process you know I've showed people how to I've show, I've done videos on how to set up a WordPress website on Apache you know using MySQL as the back end database as well as PHP so just check out that I might link it in the description of this video or something like that so you guys can actually find it but one of the things you want to do is secure MySQL. And there is a script, an automated script that I recommend you guys actually run after installing MySQL. And the command to run this script is basically sudo SQL. And then I'm going to just tab it out. I think it's underscores. And I apologize. It's MySQL. So MySQL. 
and then underscore I'm gonna tab it out and as you can see this is what I want to show you guys it's right here uh, MySQL secure installation and that's something that you want to run every single time uh, you install a fresh or you do a fresh install of MySQL so let's type secure uh, installation press enter and this first thing is basically asking you to validate your password plugin so all you have to do is type Y for yes and press enter boom and then this will allow you to set the policy for your password and this will validate all the passwords for MySQL and based on the options the most a uh, secure way of actually validating your passwords or setting the level is the strong level. Uh, as you can see is eight characters, numeric, mixed case, uh, special characters and dictionary. And then medium, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have a dictionary option. And then low is just the eight characters. And just for my purpose, I'm gonna just do low. I'm not gonna even create an account on there other than a root account. So I'm gonna just leave it at zero, you know what I'm saying? Just for this demonstration, but I always recommend you do two. And then you can uh, set your root password for MySQL. Now understand that this is the SQL password and not your user account password. And so let's type that in and then you got to type it in twice. So press enter. And we're good to go and pretty much all you have to do is press yes for the rest of these options and i'll explain them all to you but it says estimated strength of password 50 it just gives you an estimate of the strength uh which is kind of low you know what i'm saying but i set the parameters to low now it says do you wish to continue with the password provided and we could just do y for yes and then right here it says remove anonymous users we want to do that and really it's going through and basically securing everything on your server. Now, like I said, we're just going to type Y for everything else, uh, remove test database. So that's good. Uh, reload privilege table. That's good. And we are done. So that's pretty much it for securing my SQL. Now, the next step is to install PHP and it's very simple to install this. You know, you just simply type sudo. Uh, all the packages are in the main repository. So sudo apt install and then PHP. And then we need to install two more packages, basically another one for Apache and then the other one for MySQL. And the package name for that is lib Apache. And I'm gonna just tab it out. Well, I'm gonna hit no right there, but Apache and I'm gonna tab right here. But it should be Apache 2 and then mod. Yes, and that's it. And PHP. And the other package name is PHP MySQL. So PHP dash MySQL. Boom. And press enter. And that'll install all, of, all three of those packages in one swoop. So just press yes. And it'll go through and install those packages. And this will allow, you know, PHP to work with Apache. And then it'll allow it to work with my sequel as well and so as you can see all of them are installed php is installed and we can check that php you know is installed by just typing php and then dash v and that's for version and that'll give us the version we have and currently we have php 7.4.3 and you're good to go so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i know i could, probably could have went a little further but i didn't want to make the video too long i just basically want to walk through installing each port of the lamp stack and i hope this actually helped you uh set up your own web server now there are some other options that i'll look into at another in another video where i'll show you guys how to set up virtual host as well as modifying the firewall because you want to make sure you have a firewall set up i have a video on both of those steps by showing you guys how to set up virtual hosts that's like one of my highest viewed videos just showing people how to set up virtual hosts as well as modifying a firewall so you can have it have everything set up so you can view the website from outside your network but i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below i enjoy helping people set these things up 
just hit me up in an email if, if you need any assistance setting this thing up. So have a good day and keep it techy.